Man, some parts of the grill are definitely hotter than others. Oh, look at this guy's technique. You got a fan? I'm not good at this. Even this guy's got a nice fire going. Look at this. Welcome to Glackalula Market. I probably said that wrong, but it doesn't matter because this is the second channel and we're having some second channel style fun here. Once a week, people join at this market on a Sunday and you can find every different type of food here, especially the signature dishes of Oaxaca State and Oaxaca City. I'm hungry. I hope you are. Let's go. Guys, take a look at this. This is honeycomb and it's still in these like little brackets. He's scooping some up. He's putting it in a cup. This looks awesome. Super fresh honey. We are walking through the market. First of all, this place is packed, it's lively. There's so much action. There's so many things they're selling, including food, but it's nice because it's interspersed with everything else. You can get a belt, you can get a whole chicken, you can get live worms. Let me show you what I'm talking about right here. These are maguey worms. And what's awesome about the maguey plant is it can be used to make booze, they use it in cooking, and they even use the worms that try to eat that plant, and they eat those too. These can be turned into salsa or put into a bottle of tequila, whatever you want. This is salt that comes from this worm. Take a look here. I mean, I'm sure they grind up actual salt. Maybe they put some chilies in there and then the worm too. That would be my guess. Mm -hmm. Salty, smoky, it's a little earthy too. It's definitely wormy. That's delicious. I know one useful phrase in Spanish. It is, puedo comer esto? Five pesos. Oh, he's like, yeah, it's not free. All right, here we go. It's leathery. Wow. It tastes similar to the salt. It's very leathery and earthy. A bit more juicy than I expected, but hey, five pesos. That's only 25 cents for that experience. Right here is one of the most interesting, slightly bizarre drinks you'll find in Mexico. It's called Tejate. It starts as like a big batter. It looks like she's gonna make pancakes or something, but no, she adds more liquid until it gets more thin and more thin. And then it becomes what you see here. It looks like curdled milk or something like that on top of here. There's two varieties. This one has coconut, this one has walnuts. Oh, it smells good. It smells like sweet cacao. Oh, oh, how do you describe that? very satisfying. So it's a little sweet. You can taste the cacao, but it's not like chocolatey. It's like how cacao is kind of bitter. And these foamy parts on top, those are my favorite. Those are awesome. It's almost like a coconut foam. I love it. It's energy packed. They said back in the day, the farmers, they would work all morning. They'd come back midday. They'd pound a bunch of these and it would give them enough energy to get through until dinner time. I don't know if it's going to be enough energy for me. I'll probably have to eat some actual food too, but that is Tejate. 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 I'm telling you, these mannequins here in Mexico could really make someone feel insecure and inadequate. Mm. We've come to another fun food stall here. They have a bunch of sweets that you wouldn't think would be sweets. And they've kind of candy different items here to make them extra sweet and extra delicious. If everyone we have a few different options here. This one first comes from the coconut. The shape of it, it kind of reminds me of an Indian dessert called I forgot what it's called. I'm sorry, the subcontinent of India. Don't get mad at me. J uh, jula Gulab Jamun. Hey, got it. It reminds me of that. So let's see if it tastes similar. Oh, wow. That's like a two-biter. It's sweet and it's just delicious shredded coconut all bound together with definitely sugar. I'm not sure what else. That's very delicious. Here we have two items that are squash. Come take a look. This is a brown squash. It's been cooked with just a more normal, standard white sugar. This one is black though. That's been cooked with brown sugar. Let's try this one first. Really a hard part in there. I don't know what it is. It might be crystallized sugar. It's sweet, it's starchy from the squash and some of the natural sweetness, plus a lot of unnatural sweetness. A lot of sugar loaded on there. Here, this one, the black one. Is it black or is it just very, very dark brown? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Equally potent, but in a different way. It almost tastes like black licorice. It's like Jägermeister, the food version. Very intense, not my favorite one. This is made from cactus right here. I love all these cactus dishes here in Mexico. It is unspoonable. I'm just gonna go hand-to-hand -hand combat here. We were talking about the maguey plant earlier. This is from the base, they call it the pineapple, and they've turned it into something sweet here. It is so 
sweet. It's almost like eating fudge. This thing is completely saturated with sugar. The cactus itself has a little bit of a funky taste to it, but the sugar is doing its best to cover it up. It tastes like an old wooden shelf at a garage sale with a bunch of sugar dumped on top of it. I got Sam. I like it, but that is very, very sweet. Wow. Um, we're getting into some real food making action right here. It starts with a corn batter or dough. Now we're getting into some real ingredients here. This is portico, a rendered kind of pork fat. Boom, here, beans going on. I like it, it's sloppy and delicious. This is my favorite part right here, the cheese. Now this is squash blossom. This is mushroom. Oh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Oh, I asked for more cheese. Oh yes. I probably just broke 100 years of tradition by putting on extra cheese, but somehow I'm gonna be able to live with myself. And then we asked for some beef. This looks like salted beef to me, or kind of a dry beef that they put on there. Oh, it's epic folding. Next, they're putting in some salsa. Oh no, no, picante bien. Yeah, okay, so they just put in some salsa. She put on way too much, and then she reprimanded her, and I am the one who's gonna get punished when I eat this. More salsa coming in, salsa verde. Guacamole. And by that, I meant guacamole. I was just corrected. Let's take a peek inside. Oh yes, there's so many ingredients in there. It's like a whole week's worth of grocery shopping. Now, the hard part, picking it up. They don't exactly cut it into four squares here or four triangles. They just serve the whole thing and it is deteriorating quickly. Mm. Mm. The outside tastes like delicious corn tortilla chips. Mm. Wow, it's like just putting a bunch of delicious ingredients inside of a wet t-shirt. It's hardly staying together at all. The beef is a nice addition. The extra cheese is great because it's cheese. That's what I like about that. 50 pesos. This could feed a giant of a man or a giant of a woman as well. Mm. This one right here is gonna be made with yellow mole. Oh, that is gorgeous, look at that. She kind of seals the outside with a little bit of moisture, gives it a little bit of a crimp. It's got chunks of chicken, it's got this local herb, and then a yellow mole, which kind of looks even more orange than yellow. Here we go, I'm gonna, oh gosh, it's all gonna spill out. It's already leaking out mole like a scared frog. Oh, the mole is so creamy. Thick, delicious, savory sauce. And then there's just nice big chunks of chicken in there. But man, eating this is a constant teeter-totter game. You flip it, and then you start losing some on the other side. So that is mole, the orange mole. You know, mole doesn't have to be brown, it doesn't have to be black. There's many different types. This one is orange and is very good. Behind me, chilies. Chilies are hugely important to cuisine here in Mexico. Everything is like, goes back to chilies or corn in some way it seems. Here they just have a bunch of different chilies used in the local mole, kind of chocolate sauce or cacao sauce. It's very good, I'll tell you that. So there's one special reason why I wanted to come to this market in particular. They have something that I haven't seen in other parts of Mexico, although it may exist. It's a grill your own barbecue station. No, markets like this, they have tons of fresh meat. The animal probably died this morning. You can go in there, pick your meat, and then from there, usually you would have to go to your house. Here, you can actually put it on the barbecue. You can grill it yourself. So I'm gonna see how this works and see if I can figure it out. It's kind of like Korean barbecue, but in Mexico. I smell, it's right behind me. It's super smoky. We're gonna head in right now. We are now entering, and here it is. You can see, boom, the meat cellars right here, and then here, the meat grillers. Look at that. Hola. Look, there's this dog. If I was a dog, this is 100% where I would hang out. I'm me, and this is still 100% where I wanna hang out. Once you're in here, there's a few different steps. Step one, get meat. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Here, hanging up, we have chorizo, the little sausages. Here on the side, these are just onions, but up here you can see intestines. These are cow intestines. They're very popular, they're called tripa. I've had those before inside of a taco. Then over here you have your more standard steaks with different amounts of fat in each. This is super lean, this is somewhat lean, and this is just super, super fatty. For me, I'm gonna get one with a little bit more fat. Even beef fat that you grill it, it gets all like crispy and juicy. I love it. Hola, señorita, 200 gramos. Esto, look at that, nice, big, juicy steak. Oh my gosh, he's just pulling off intestines. Okay, you know what, 200 grams of intestines, that might have been too much. Oh, that's big, should I get that whole thing? Medio kilo. 
Okay, yeah, let's por favor. So here is the order. It's really coming together. It's probably, maybe, too much meat. Chorizo, little baby onions. All right, the whole thing comes to 235 pesos for all of this and for all those intestines. Can you believe this is an outrageous deal on intestines? Throughout this whole hall, everybody's sharing all the different grills. I found one that's just for me. How do I get this off? I have one hand. Hola. Can you pull this? See. Si. Oh, mucho gracias. Ooh, that's going on. Here, these are the ribs. Oh, this is a lot of meat. I might be able to feed some of those puppies. This is the steak. Actually, this is what I'm looking forward to the most. And then here, the intestines, I'm looking forward to that the least. Look at this, we got some veggies. These are chilies, I'll take one actually. 10 pesos, 50 cents. Ah, that's it. Chilies going on next. Oh yes. Man, some parts of the grill are definitely hotter than others. Oh, look at this guy's technique. You got a fan? I'm not good at this. Even this guy's got a nice fire going, look at this. All right, we're moving to this grill because it's a lot more hot and I've recruited some help, so I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. So that's how it works here. You can cook your own food or you can kind of hire someone to do it for you. I was very confident to begin with. Now, not so much. So he's gonna help out. Oh, it's already getting done. This is all the different meat he just grilled, but this one right here is a chorizo, the Mexican sausage. <laughs> oh my God, that's undeniable. It's interesting, chorizo can be so like fatty but crumbly at the same time. Great spices, wonderful texture. That is delicious. Mm, so delicious and so juicy. Look at my hands. They're just covered in chorizo juice. My favorite juice after banana and apple. We're gonna go find a place to eat this and then we're gonna eat it. What a journey this has been. And honestly, it doesn't hurt to get a little bit of help along the way. Here, five kinds of meat, a couple different kinds of vegetables. On the side, I got tortillas. Oh my gosh, they have a lady just down the way here. You grab a tortilla. Wait, oh, mezcal? Hola, senor. This gentleman has a mezcal? Pepsi bottle. Guess what, that ain't Pepsi, that's mezcal. This very kind gentleman's offering me some mezcal. It's like tequila's dirty stepbrother, cousin. Salud. Wow. Actually, considering he probably made this in his bathtub, it starts out pretty rocky, but it gets smooth after that. And then it just warms you up. Oh. Mucho gracias. He's like Mexican Santa Claus, just going around making dreams come true as long as your dream is to have one Pepsi cap full of mezcal that was made in his bathtub. Okay, I'm gonna try first this right here. Under that, this is the intestines. This is your tissue, this is your knife, this is your spoon, this is your plato, which means plate. A beautiful, soft flour tortilla. I'm just gonna rip off a piece, and then that's gonna become how I hold my food. So, I'm gonna put a little bit of avocado on that. So just down the way, they also have a lady selling avocados, and if you ask nicely, she will cut them up for you. Here's my mini taco full of intestines. Tacos de tripa. Uh oh, definitely chewy. It's a little bit like calamari. Avocado makes it a little bit creamy. Oh, my friend is back. What's up? Tortilla? Mmm. That bite was not too bad, actually. Not gaming. Super charred, super smoky. I mean, he grilled the F out of it. There's no more F remaining. All the F grilled out. This is something I'm really looking forward to right here. I got my tortilla. I'm gonna pick this up. Look at this. That is a lot of meat. I gotta break it up. Oh. Oh man, so all the meat has been pre-salted before you even put it on the grill. They season it for you. That's pretty damn good. This is kind of the rib meat. Oh, that looks pretty good actually. It's charred, it's fatty. Oh. What? Mamma mia, that is delicious. Some parts are fatty, some parts are kind of crunchy because it's been a little bit overcooked here and there. I mean, the flames here, the charcoal is out of control. It's a big mix. It's like Mike Myers and Paul Bunyan teamed up to hack up a cow into indescribable pieces. It's hard to tell what part that's coming from. I'm gonna make one more taco, the king of all tacos. I've got a fresh new tortilla. Boom, I'm putting in all this meat. I'm gonna squeeze in an avocado like it's a lime. One more avocado. I'm gonna put in a whole chili and then a bunch of these onions too. That is my little burrito. Get in a, with a fly, get out of there. This is like a giant, beautiful tortilla. Oh my gosh, there we go. That's really good. Wow. Mmm. Green onions, fresh chilies, salted meat is well seasoned. A big flowery soft blanket of tortilla going around it. Creamy avocado. That is delicioso, my friend. And that is Spanish for yummy. 
place is magical. And this is a magical ending. An incredible meal, a once in a lifetime experience. Yes, you could have Korean barbecue, but it's gonna be nothing like the fun, extraordinary chaos you'll find here. It's delicious, it's confusing, and somehow, at the end of the day, it works. Guys, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Here, a day in Oaxaca, a little outside of Oaxaca City, to the Sunday market, lots of action, lots of food, and a cool concept, right? Barbecuing right next to the meat vendors. I like it. As always, if you want to look cool like I do when I review food, you can buy your own bandanas. See what I'm wearing right now? Find the link in the description down below. That's going to be it for this one. I hope you're enjoying these second channel videos. We'll keep them coming and we'll keep them, well, pretty relaxed. I shot this with my phone. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.